Hey guys, this is Adam with CAT Express, and today I'm gonna show you how to change brakes on an 18-wheeler. So stay tuned, and let's get this video started. Okay guys, so getting the truck ready is very important. Uh, there's a couple safety steps, or a few safety steps I wanna point out to you guys. Uh, one thing is chocks. You always wanna put suitable chocks uh, for these size trucks. I've seen videos out there where they're putting uh, four by fours, or I'm sorry, two by fours. Uh, that, that's just not enough to stop that wheel in case it, uh, in case it rolls on you. Uh, if you wanna come back here, you know, I already got the truck uh, jacked up um, and I already got it on stands. So whenever you got the truck jacked up, you wanna go ahead and put this on, uh, on jack stands. Even though I'm gonna be showing you how to do brakes just on one axle or actually one side, uh, this over here is going to be, I'm going to go ahead and put a jack on both sides. I'm not going to leave the weight on the jack. I'm going to let the jack down and leave the weight on the stands. And the reason why you want to do this is this is air ride suspension. You can see the airbags here in the back. The air ride suspension over time, if the truck has an air leak and you're working on it, it can shift on you. So if there's an air leak and the bags actually deflate, then there's, the truck is going to shift forward. And if you're sitting on a jack, or just the jack and you don't have wheel chocks, there's a good possibility it's gonna come off the, and, and be on the floor. So that's not what we want to happen. So we got the jack stands on, everything's ready to go. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is start pulling these uh, covers off. We got a hub cover and we got lug nut covers. Most of the time these will just pull right off just like so. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all these off. Make sure you keep up with them. You don't want to scratch them up. All right, this one, no. All right, there it goes. And you got this one. It looks like it's going to come off pretty easy. All right, there we go. Go ahead and put everything together like that. Okay, guys, so I'm going to get these wheel lugs off. Uh, I'm running a 15 horsepower compressor. And this is an Ingersoll one inch impact, over 14, 1,400 foot pounds of torque. So it's gonna come off pretty easy here. Okay, so I got the lug nuts off. Uh, one thing why I mentioned uh, my setup for the compressor is uh, sometimes what you're going to have, well, a lot of times if you don't have the right setup, you're not going to be able to get these lug nuts off. Um, you, you're not going to need a 15 horsepower, uh, but that Ingersoll, that one inch that I'm running, you got to look up the specs and see what the minimum CFMs they are on that gun, and that's what you want to be running. So got the lug nuts off, slide these over here to the side. I uh, got to grab a wheel bar. so. Let me grab this tire bar and I'll show you how to get these wheels off. Okay guys, so I'm about to get these uh, this tires off. Uh, you want to get you a good tire iron, you know, a good right size tire iron. So uh, what I want to explain to you on getting these tires off, uh, you don't want to wrestle them off. Uh, I see a lot of people get wore out trying to wrestle these tires off. What you're going to do is you're going to let the bar do most of the work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get up, I'm going to push this tire to keep it, see how I brought up the Get this tire up under here, get the bar up under there, and then I'm just gonna work this way out of there. Just like that. I let the bar go so I can just roll this wheel over here. Now I'm gonna get this inside one off. Sometimes these inside ones can be binded. So what you're gonna do, you can go into one of these holes here, and just work its way out. Not every time it's just gonna pop right off so be patient work it out of there all right we got it there to the end of the lug nuts I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna lift up the bottom work it off the hub the tire out the way roll this over here now we're down to the drum okay so this particular brake setup you got brake pads and drum okay so the way the brake the brakes work is actually they push up against the drum outwards, make your brake power. So right now the brakes are actually set. So you can see I can't even rotate the wheel. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna release the brakes on the truck, 
come back here, uh, take the slack out of the slack adjuster so I can get this drum off. So let's release the brakes. Okay, so we're going to release the brakes. One thing I wanted to mention, when you change in brakes, uh, the time, when you need to change the brakes is when your brake pad is actually down to a quarter inch. When it gets down to a quarter inch, that's considered out of safety regs. So that's when actually you need to change your brakes. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and release these brakes. I'm going to hit the yellow button. Gonna hit the yellow button on the truck here. Release the brakes. Got to make sure you have 100 pounds of pressure in the system. If it doesn't have 100 pounds of pressure in the system, then you need to go ahead and crank the truck up. Uh, make sure you have 100 pounds of pressure. Push the button in and release your brakes. Uh, now that the brakes are released, I'm going to go ahead and uh, back off the slack adjuster. Uh, that way I can get that drum off. So I'm going to get this brake, this jacks out of the way here so I can get up under here. So slack adjusters are all different types. Uh, you either got, most of the newer trucks are going to have automatic slack adjusters uh, uh, that have an actual locking clutch in there. So just backing it off is, uh, is what's going to get this off for you. Uh, if you like, let me get it in a different angle so that you can get up under here and you can actually take a look of uh, how we're going to be doing this. All right, so what we're going to do, here's your slack adjuster here. Here's the bolt we're going to be loosening. Uh, here's your brake pads and brake drum. So you can go ahead and put your ratchet on here. Like I mentioned, you're going to back it up. Now that popping noise is normal. This has got what's called a clutch inside of it. So just back it up till it actually stops. There it goes. So as you can see, uh, here on our gap on our drum, you can see how much gap we got here. Uh, the brakes are pretty backed up. Now we're going to get the drum off. Okay, we got the uh, brakes backed out. Now I'm about to get this drum off. The way you get this drum off, you're just going to have to hammer it with a heavy hammer. So uh, let me grab that hammer so we can get this brake drum off. This is actually a smaller hammer. Uh, I'm going to try to see if I can get it off with this hammer. If not, we'll go with a bigger hammer. But what you're going to do is you're going to hit this drum until you see it break loose. You see all this kind of popping off of it. That's a lot of rust coming off. I saw the brake drum kind of kick forward a little bit once I was doing that. So I'm going to double check it. and You can see it's already off. This is a heavy drum. Uh, so you want to get up under it, get, some good, uh, get a good grip on it set it on the ground, so here we go. Okay, so that's the brake drum. Okay guys, so we got the brake drum off. Uh, I wanna give you a good look at the brake shoes here. Uh, this is the actual brake liner, and this is the brake shoe. So what happened is this liner is what you're gonna be gauging uh, your quarter inch depth on, or your quarter inch width on. Uh, these brakes are actually good. We're just changing out these brakes for video purposes. Um, another thing I'd like to show you on the brake drum here, uh, let me flip it out and flip it over here. This brake drum, you can kind of look at this wear here. You want to feel the surface of this drum and make sure it's got an even wear and not a big wear lip. This one's still good. Uh, if you get a drum that has a big wear lip, a uh, big wavy pattern here, uh, you want to change the drum out as well. Uh, usually you can do about two brake, brake pads on these type drums. This one is still good. Uh, all we're going to do is the brake pads on this one. So uh, I'm going to show you how to get these brake shoes off. Okay guys, so the next thing we're going to do is get these brake shoes off. Uh, what we use here is a brake, uh, brake tool, OTC part number 5081. Uh, you can see it's kind of got the angle on it. This is what we use to get these springs off. What you're going to do is you're going to get both of these springs off. You got two here, one on each side. Sometimes they're going to be easy to come off, sometimes not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get up under here, push it down, work its way out of there like that. Got that spring off. Uh, this one here, it's going to be a little bit tougher to get off. Let's see if I can get it up from the top here. All right, boom, there. Got those two off. And all you're going to do next is pull these brake pads back like this, rotate them. There you go. You got your brake shoes off. So here's your brake shoes. And the way that they're together here uh, is you got your main spring here. 
your roller that rolls on the S-cam, and of course those two springs that we just removed. Uh, so I'm gonna get the new brakes that we're gonna be installing. Um, every time you get these brake shoes off, you wanna see what kind of style they are. Sometimes you can see a nameplate here, but after doing them for a while, you'll start to notice this is a 47, 4709. Uh, so let me get these brake shoes, the new ones, so we can get these on. Okay, so we got our new shoes here. About to open it up. You always want to put new hardware. Every brake shoe kit should have new hardware. Uh, don't ever try to use the same hardware. Go ahead and pull these shoes out here. Get that out the way. All right, so here's the hardware. Let me open it up, dump it out. Get all this hardware out of here. All right, first thing you're gonna wanna do is uh, put these rollers on. These are actually, these two are the springs we just took off. This is the main spring that's gonna hold your brake shoes together. Uh, these springs here are your keepers. So you're gonna put these rollers in here for both sides. Just like that. And you're gonna set these here, push these springs in. They're gonna go into this hole here. That's going to keep them in spot right there, just like that. Same, same one on the other side, set it in there. Both sides. This large spring here, uh, there's a pin here on the inside of the shoe on both sides. All you're going to do is hook these in there, just like that. Now we have our shoe assembled as if we took them off. Uh, now we're going to put them back on the assembly here and install our two springs and be good to go. Okay, so I got the brakes here. Kind of work their way back on here. You can kind of set this first one on first. Uh, sometimes you have to wrestle these on there. Kind of work them on here. Work your way on. Work, work your way where you want to be here. Kind of get the rollers on the S cam there. I already tore my glove, but it's fine. I'm get this roller on the back side here. Just like that. And we're on there, just like that. Cool, all right. So now we're gonna go with the springs. We're gonna start the first one here. Go back with your brake, your brake tool here. And get it in that hole right there. Sometimes those brake shoes, since it's going to have tension on that side, you see how it brings it back like this. What I like to do, if you don't get that spring hook all the way in there, what I'd like to do is just get some channel locks. Pop it in there. You can hear it pop. Make sure it's in there good. You always want to make sure these springs are set good all the way in there. Okay, so we go with our second spring. Pull the brake shoe up a little bit if you like. Get it started just like I did on the first one. Get my channel locks in here. Pop it in there. You can double check here inside and see that that's all the way engaged on both sides. The top ones, bottom ones, good to go. Now we're ready to uh, install the drum again and uh, adjust the brakes. So let's get that done. Okay guys, uh, so before I put this brake uh, drum back on I wanted to show you something here when I put these brake shoes on uh, they actually fed on there just right they fit on there just right everything was just fine uh, sometimes if you see that this side doesn't align where you see where this is not gonna it's gonna sit right on that roller it's not gonna align right or it's gonna be back here what you're gonna need to do is back off that slack adjuster or some more so you can see this S cam here so the way that the brake system works is this S cam rotates and it spreads the brakes out this way. So if you're still out this way or, or adjusted too far out, you're not gonna be able to get that drum on and your brake shoe's not gonna sit right on the assembly. So once you back that brake shoe up, or I'm sorry, once you back the uh, slack adjuster out, 
uh, that S cam is going to back out and everything should line up just perfectly. Uh, you want it, that's, this is how you want it. You want it sitting there just like this so this drum will go on there smoothly and you're not fighting to get it on. So let's get this brake drum on. Again, like I mentioned, this is a heavy brake drum. So get up under it and work it on there. Line up your hose. Here we go. Once I got that drum on there, I'm just going to get down here now. And I'm going to line these bolts up, slide it right on there, just like that. Uh, now we're ready to put the wheels back on. Again, you're going to use your tire, tire iron to get this on. When you want to put these back on, what I like to do is walk this wheel all the way up to the hub assembly here. Just walk it all the way up. Now that we're all the way there, then we use our tire bar to lift up the bottom of the tire and get it on the hub, just like that. Slide it, keep your foot on the wheel so you don't lose it. So keep sliding it up like this. If I took my wheel off, you can see how the wheel slides back. So you want to keep your foot all the way up against it. Rotate it, rotate it. There you go, just like that. Work it on there. It's all the way there. Now we go with the second one. Another thing I'd like to mention is your valve stems. You want to have them 180 degrees apart. You always want to make sure the driver is able to access these valve stems. Uh, you don't want. You want to make sure you don't block these valve stems. Okay, all the way up against it. Back up. I'm going to rotate this wheel so that I can get this valve stem 180 from the other one. And make sure that they're both accessible. Now we go on with the wheel. Once I'm about right here, you can head, go ahead and start you couple of these bolts keep the wheel on there keep it in place that way give you time to get the other ones on there got the wheel in place go ahead and set these other ones in here what I'm gonna do is just start these by hand and then of course I'm gonna use the impact to drive them all the way in there. When you go to tighten these, what you want to do is you want to tighten them in a crisscross pattern. So for example, if I start with one up here, I'm going to go ahead and jump to the one exactly across that one. And I'm going to keep doing that till I make myself all the way around. And then what I like to do is run the gun all the way around one more time just to verify everything's tight. So I got these bolts started here, or these nuts started. Uh, now I can go ahead and tighten it down with the impact. Okay, like I mentioned, we're going to tighten this in a, in a crisscross pattern. So I'll go with the first one up top. I'm not going to tighten that first one all the way. I'm going to come down across from it. Go ahead and tap that one. wheel is rotating while you're trying to turn just go ahead and hold the wheel with your shoe Like I mentioned before, once you're done with the crisscross pattern, go ahead and hit them all one more time. All right, so that's all tightened down right there. Uh, what I'm gonna do next is I can put the uh, hubcaps back on, uh, adjust the brakes, and I'll be able to get it off the jack stands and we'll be done. Okay guys, so just like before, we're gonna get up under here. So you're gonna get up under here. You're gonna do the exact thing you did last time, but you're gonna 
do the opposite. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten these brake shoes back down. And you're going to see them hit the drum there. Once they hit the drum, it's going to be tight. Once it's tight, all you're going to do is back it off. This is with the brakes release. You're going to back it off a half a turn. So you back it off a half a turn. Now we got our brakes adjusted. We're good to go. Okay, brakes are adjusted. Now I'm about to put the hubcaps back on. Okay guys, now that I got that done, I'm going to go ahead and set the brakes um, before I let uh, actually get it off the jack stands and then we'll be done with this uh, brake replacement. Brakes are set, now I'm going to put the jack on it, get it off the stands and we'll be done. Okay guys, so that's how you change brakes on the 18-wheeler. Um, of course, you're going to do that all the way around. That was only for one set. Um, so I hope you liked the video. I hope you're able to learn from it. If you got any questions, you can email us at info at tatexpressinc.com or you can call us at 972-225-3017. Again, I hope you liked the video. I hope you learned something. If you did, like, share, subscribe. Turn on your notifications. We're going to be putting more content out. So until next time, be safe.